Welcome to this next lesson and this one's all about volumes and for these ones we're going to be working inside of Houdini as we're dealing with volumes and Houdini is really known for its strength and versatility when it comes to creating volumes and VDBs. So once we finish working in Houdini I'm also going to show you how you can export a VDB from Houdini and use that within Maya and render it also within RenderMan. And you can also use the same VDB within Blender and Katana. But in this series of volume lessons, we'll be concentrating on Houdini as our main DCC. So the Pixar volume can be used for many creative uses, but mainly it's used for atmospheric effects such as fog, fire, smoke and other such effects. And in this first part of the lesson, we'll be working in Houdini and adding fog to a simple spotlight scene so that we can view the light rays being emitted from the light itself and these visual light rays are often referred to as God rays and happen when light rays are broken up by obstructing objects. So such examples include rays of light beaming through the forests, sunlight through window frames and of course those classic UFO beams. Okay so before we get started on volumes let me show you what I've got here. I've got this scene and I've got this spotlight which I've set up and I've got a single light which is being emitted from this Pixar rectangular light here. And as you can see, it beams downwards and it hits this floor. And if I show you a little bit closer how the light is set up, I've got an intensity of two and I'm, I've set the exposure to 11. And I'm also using the temperature as well to drive the color. And if you can see here, I'm also refining the cone angle and the cone softness because I kind of want to use it how a spotlight would be. And in future lessons, I'm going to dive more into these values. And I'm also going to show you in future lessons how you can mimic this as well using the Barn Dawn filters. But for this lesson here, you can see that I'm controlling the light spread with this cone angle. And if I reduce it down, it feels much more like a spotlight. And you can see here that if I zoom in a little bit closer on the floor, then I've got this scratches texture which I'm using. And the way I've built this is using the new Pixar Bump Roughness node, which is in RenderMan 24. And I'm also using the new Pixar Hex Tiling Manifold to drive my bump to roughness map. And again, in future lessons, we're going to take a closer look at this, but I just thought I would show you that we're running in RenderMan 24 and we're also using a couple of the new features. Okay, so just going back to the scene, let me come here and refine my light. I just want to bring that back to where we were. And I've also got a dome light here, which is illuminating the scene. And I've also got here this visible light. And again, in the future, I'm going to show you how I set this up and the reasons why I set this up but the visible light is actually the texture you can see here. And so the reasons for this is that if I start to drive the intensity of this texture value, then actually you won't see any of the textures inside. So that's why I've effectively got two lights here. So the first thing we need to do is create a container for our volume. And in this example, I'm just going to use a simple box. So if I create a box here, now what I need to do is scale this up so that it encompasses my scene. And so the first thing you need to understand is that rendering volumes can be quite expensive. So always try and keep your volume boxes as kind of small and as neat and compact as you need them to be. Don't try and make them way bigger than actually your scene requires because all that extra render computation is just going to slow down your overall render times. Now you can see here that we've got this box and it's not very interesting at all. And if I come to the material panel and come back up here, and so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a material builder. And so if I just drop down a Pixar material builder and I'm gonna call this volume, and diving inside of it here, I'm just going to start typing the word volume. And this is what we want. We want this Pixar volume node. And if I just connect the output to our shader, now this is all we need to do for the minute. And just coming back out of here, and then just coming back to our box, I can come to my render tab and I can drag and drop it here. And so now what you'll start to see is that we've now created a volume material and we've applied it to our box. And so the second thing I want to bring to your attention is that not only is this volume box being illuminated by the light coming from our spotlight, but it's also being illuminated by the HDRI dome. 
And the way to get around this in Houdini is by using the light linker. You can see here that I have my Pixar dome light that it's illuminating the dust, which I'm going to show you later. It's illuminating the floor and it's also illuminating all the spotlight. But if we come all down to the bottom here, you can also see that it's illuminating this box. And if I just control and click on it, now what happens is that this dome light is illuminating my entire scene apart from this box. And so the next thing we want to take a look at is the fact that it's very, very black and we can't see very much that's going on. And this is due to the density of our volume. So if I come back to the shader here, you can see that here we have this density float. So if I just change this value from 1 to 0 0.1, you can now see that what we're starting to get is this really nice volume rays that are emitting from our light and yet because we've turned the dome light off in the light linker, we don't see it everywhere else as well. And this is quite a useful trick by using this light linker to control what is illuminated by certain lights and what isn't. And it's a feature which I think is quite overlooked from time to time. Okay, so before we have a look at all the parameters within the Pixar volume node, let me just go back and change the camera so that we're a bit closer to the volume itself. Now here comes another little tip is that when working with volumes, it's quite difficult to actually see what's going on because our volume is contained within this huge great box. So what I can do is change the display value of how this box is seen. And at the minute in Houdini, it's set to full geometry. But what I can do here is I can come to bounding box. So I can now start to see through my volume, which is this box, and I can see the objects that are actually contained inside of it. Let me get a good angle on this so we can start to see what our volumes are really doing. Okay, now coming back to the Pixar volume, let's go through some of these parameters. Now the first one here is diffuse color. And like the node says, it allows you to change the color of your fog. So I can go ahead here and I can make it red or green or whatever color I want. And in most cases, you can probably leave this to white. Um, and you can also start to bring it darker as well, which is very useful for things like smoke. But it also gives the impression that the density is lower as well. And, you know, like all things, you have that artistic control. So you can keep it within reality. Or if you want to have red UFO smoke, um, feel free to go ahead. Um, let me put this back to white. So the next parameter here is emit color. And this is really useful for when you're doing explosions and fire. Because what it does is it actually gets the brightness and intensity parameters from your explosions. And you can start to then actually emit light from your volumes. And this only really works when you've ticked this light source button as well. So if you're doing explosions, this emit color and ticking the light source on is actually really, really useful. And so next here we have multiple scattering and by default this is off because it's pretty render intensive. And when this is off, what happens is that you only get a single scattering within your lights within the volume. And if I then start to turn this on, you can really start to see that what happens is that the light is being bounced around inside of our volume box. Like I say, it is very render expensive and for most situations you probably don't need this. So again, you can turn this one off in this example. And so the, here we have the velocity and velocity multiplier and these handle the motion blur aspects of the volume. And in our case here, the fog isn't moving, so we don't need to worry too much about it. But if you're rendering moving volumes such as ground fog, smoke, explosions and fire, then these options allow you to tweak and control the motion blur of that volume. So the next two values here are density float primvar and density float. And this is where you start to add variation to the density of our fog. And at the moment, our density is all one value. That value is defined here with this density float. So our homogeneous volume, which means that everything in our volume is the same density, at the minute is set to 0.01. But again, if I take this back to its default of 1, you can see that now everything in our volume is the same density. We don't get any breakup and we don't get any noise. So if I take this back to 0 0.01, now you're all shouting at the computer screen and going, well, why don't you just plug in a noise node into the density float and drive the variation and breakup? Well, the reason that you shouldn't really do that, and it's pretty unrecommended in a render man world, is 
that the noise values aren't being cached and therefore you end up computing millions and millions more times of calculations inside the volume. But if you are going to go down this route, you need to try and make your noise as inexpensive as possible to try and limit the number of octaves and layers as possible in your noise. So if you're really determined to be a render man rebel, let me show you how you can use a noise and drive the density float. So let's drop down a Pixar fractal and let me open up the density tab here. And then I want to take the result float and plug that into the density float. And then I'm just going to solo the result of that. Now, like I said, let's try and ease up on these layers and let's play with some of these values and create some noise a bit like that. So now what we're doing is we're using this noise to drive the float value of our density. And if I unsolo this, you can now start to see that we've started to get some breakup within our volume. Now, what you can do is then you can now start to reduce this float scale to bring the overall set of values of our float down. So again, I kind of want to bring this all the way down. And now what we're starting to see is we're starting to get some breakup within our fog. But this is unrecommended because what you'll end up doing is really slowing render man down. You also won't get terribly realistic results. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you actually the correct way of doing it. But before I show you the correct way, let me just delete this rebellious fractal node. Now, for those eagle eyed render fans here, you may have noticed that this VDB volume node has suddenly and magically appeared at the bottom right hand corner here. And let me show you what this is doing. So if I jump to the scene view here, this is our homogeneous volume, which you can see being rendered here. And if I hide it and then I then unhide this VDB volume and I dive inside of it, you can see that there are four nodes here. The first one is creating a box. And so this next node here creates a volume out of this box. And as you can see, it's very similar to the Pixar volume node where it's creating a consistent and constant density across all of the whole volume. Now, this is where the magic happens and it happens inside of this volume VOP. And for those who need to know how to create one of these, there's plenty of tutorials online. And if I activate it, you'll see what happens. I'm using the turbulent noise to drive that inconsistency and variation within the density. And then finally here, I then convert it back into a VDB. And this has now cached all these density values. And this is the difference between caching the values so that render man doesn't have to do it or using the rebellious way and using a Pixar noise node. So if I then show you how to use this, if I fire up the render, you can see that nothing much new has happened. But if we inspect the values here, you can see that we now have this density value which is now being calculated. And this is happening within the volume VOP. If I close that down and coming back to our Pixar volume, and all I need to do is simply type the word density into the density float primvar. So what it's doing is it's getting all the density variation values that this turbulent noise is creating and then the Pixar volume is then using that to drive the variation in the density. And if I just turn the light down a little bit, you can see it a little bit more clearer. And now what we're starting to get is this much more photorealistic variation and break up to our density. And as I said before, this is actually the correct way of doing it. And so in the second part of this lesson, we're going to take the VDB that we've just created out of Houdini and then use it within our Pixar Studio scene.